Lesson five is on combined and real gas laws. So we're gonna talk about the combined gas law, we're gonna practice it, talk about the ideal gas law, and then we're gonna talk about conditions for that law. So combined gas law, which is found on table T, involves pressure, temperature, and volume as variables. So these are always gonna be changing numbers. However, the number of moles is constant. So it's a combination of Boyle's law, which is P1V1 equals P2V2, Charles's law, which is V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, and Gay-Lussac's law, which is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. If you put them all together, you get this lovely formula, P1V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2V2 divided by T2. So when we use the combined gas laws, again we're using reference table A to tell us our standard temperature and pressure. Temperature, again, is either going to be 273 degrees Kelvin or 0 degrees Celsius, and pressure is either 101.3 kPa, or it's one atmosphere, or it's also equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury or 760 torr. The next following couple of questions we are not going to be telling you the answers to. Therefore, you have to solve these on your own and show us in class so we can check your work. Please use the formula that we just gave you so you can solve this problem. So looking at this problem using the combined gas laws, you're noticing that you have a 154 milliliter sample of carbon dioxide gas that is generated by burning graphite, which is carbon, in a sample of pure oxygen. If the pressure of the gas generated is 121 kilopascals and its temperature is at 117 degrees Celsius, what volume would the gas occupy at standard temperature and pressure. So you have to look at this question and understand the fact that we're using three different variables. We're using pressure, volume, and temperature, and we're looking for the initial change and the final variable. So the first thing you have to do is write down what you have. You know that you're trying to find the volume if the gas is at standard temperature and standard pressure. You're going to be using reference table A to determine what those values are. The other values, like original volume, and original pressure, and original temperature, is already given to you. You just have to find volume using standard temperature and pressure. Another example is 2.7 liter sample of nitrogen is collected at 212 kilopascals and 288 Kelvin. If the pressure increases to 252 kilopascals and the temperature is then recorded at 303 Kelvin, what volume will the nitrogen occupy? So again, plug these numbers into the formula and solve. So now we're going to discuss the ideal gas law. We are going to assume that gases behave ideally, meaning they obey the gas laws under all temperatures and pressures. Ideal gases, however, don't actually exist, but it makes the math easier and is a close approximation. The ideal gas model assumes that the particles of a gas have no volume. If you think about what is the size of one molecule, it's so tiny it's insignificant. There are also going to be no attractive forces between the particles, so that means nothing is clumping together. If it was clumping together, then your gas sample technically would be partially liquid or partially solid. The ideal gas model also assumes that all collisions between the gas particles are elastic, which means that there is a perfect transition between energies between the two particles. Gas. 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 So ideal gases, though they do not really exist, the molecules actually do take up space. Again, if you wanted to find what is the volume of one molecule of CO2, it would be an incredibly small volume. It does take up space because matter must take up space. All gases are attracted to other things. But without attractive forces, how then would liquids form? Think of a shower mist turning into liquid water on cold walls of a tire or mirror. These are the forces that bring those gases back together. And when we refer to attractive forces, we are referring to intermolecular forces. So it could be London, it could be dipole, or it could be hydrogen forces. So when the molecules are far apart, 
They do not take up as big of a percentage of the space. We can ignore their volume at low pressures then. When molecules are moving fast at high temperatures, this means that the collisions are harder and faster. The molecules are not next to each other for very long because they're moving so fast past each other and attractive forces cannot play a role. There are no gases that are actually ideal. However, real gases behave this way at high temperatures and low pressures. Think summertime conditions. You're out of school, you have very little pressure on you, but the temperatures are nice and warm. So high temperature is required because it minimizes the attractive forces between the gas particles. It's because they're moving so fast. Low pressure is also required because gas samples have large volumes. Volume of individual particles is minimized relative to the entire sample. Hydrogen and helium often act ideally under many temperatures and pressures that other gases cannot. So often under regions, they'll ask which two gases are most ideal. Hydrogen and helium would be the answer. Okay.